Welcome back everybody. My name is Steven Aldaco and in today's video we're ranking the best and worst vans for van life. We have a super simple grading system today. We're using S for the best vans and D for the worst vans. And if you don't know me already, my name is Steven Aldaco. I've been living inside my Honda Element for two years and we're gonna rank the best vans for you. I did my best to choose a wide variety of vans, high tops, low tops, minivans, and everything in between. But if there's any vans that I missed, leave a comment down below and maybe we'll rank them in a different video. We're almost at our goal of 1,000 subscribers and we hope to hit that goal by June 27th of this year, 2021. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to help us hit our goal. Other than that, let's jump into it, ranking the best and worst vans for van life. Here we go. So let's start here in no particular order with the Ford Transit Connect. It's not as tall as the full Ford Transit van. And because it's not as tall, it offers a lot better gas mileage. So you're gonna be able to travel to different areas and you're not you're gonna have to worry so much about the gas prices because your Ford Transit van is getting really good gas mileage. Uh, it has a lot of space in the cargo area, a lot more than you would get in like a minivan, but it is kind of boring. It's kind of plain um, and it's not very attractive as far as like a van is concerned. So for this van, let's go ahead and give it uh, about a C ranking. Not, not too bad, but not the greatest, pretty average. So I'm probably going to piss a lot of people off with this one, but we have up next a school bus. Now, school bus is awesome for a lot of reasons. It's kind of like a rolling apartment. It's huge, and that's also its downfall. So the gas mileage is gonna be terrible. It's gonna be almost impossible to park. Luckily, these buses are super robust and they're known to last a long time. So you're not gonna worry about it breaking down. And if it does break down, it's gonna be pretty easy to fix. But the gas you're going to spend to get to your destination is going to cost you a fortune, which I kind of think defeats part of like the van life appeal. So let's go ahead and take the school bus and let's give it a C ranking. Ooh, okay. I feel the hate in the comments already, you guys. Let's talk about a newer van. This one is the Ram Promaster. It's one of the top three vans that you can choose and buy in the market right now. It's built uh, on the Fiat platform. It's basically a rebranded Fiat. So reliability is gonna be a little bit of an issue. Ooh, I know there's a lot of people who love this van, a lot of people who build it out, but it's just not a quality product. It's not a quality van. So there are known to be issues with the transmission, issues with the headlights, and it's kind of ugly. Just my opinion, but it's a little bit ugly. <laughs> One good thing about this van is that it does have a really good turning radius, and it's also available in gas and diesel models. I've had the ability to drive this van as well, and everything just kind of feels cheap, cheaply built in this van. So I think right now we're gonna give this van a B rating. Um, something that's really good about that van is that it has these really square walls and it makes the van build a lot easier if you're trying to build it yourself. Um, and there's also lots of configurations, a 136, a 159, um, a tall and a low roof. So you can kind of pick and choose which model you want um, and they're available on the market now. So that's a good thing. The next van we're gonna talk about is a legend in van life, and this is going to be the Sprinter, specifically the T1N model. Now the T1N model is known to be super reliable, and they're known to go into the millions of miles with the engine. Another great thing about the T1N is that it's super easy to work on. Um, there's lots of aftermarket parts available for it. There's high roof, low roof, mid roofs, and it gets really good gas mileage, somewhere in the 22 to 25 miles per gallon. Now this van was built before there was a lot of restrictions on how um, diesel is used in the United States specifically. So because of that, it doesn't have a lot of the complicated emission systems that some of the newer sprinters have. And I also think it just kind of looks cool and has a ton of aftermarket support. So for the T1N Sprinter, we're going to rank it as an S class. Top tier van, 
Now, if you're not already a part of the van life community, this next one might surprise you, but the Toyota Prius is actually a very cool option for doing van life. One of the things that makes the Toyota Prius pretty unique is that it's a hybrid, and because it's a hybrid, you can run the AC and the heat all night long to keep your um, living space uh, nice and cool or warm whatever kind of weather you're in another really cool thing about the prius is the gas mileage is incredible it's awesome you can get like 35 45 even 50 miles per gallon which means that you're going to save a ton of money on gas and you can see all sorts of sites and drive all over the country and saving a ton of money while doing it not only on gas but on rent if you're doing it full time there are some cons about the toyota prius uh, it's obviously a very small car, so you're not going to be able to carry a lot of things and that might make it a little bit difficult if you're doing it full time. But as a weekend camper sort of vehicle, I think it's like super awesome and has a lot of unique things about it. I've seen a lot of different platforms built uh, with the Toyota Prius and they look fairly comfortable, which is great, even for someone who's a little bit taller over six feet. Uh, one thing to note about the Toyota Prius is that it has a, it's very low to the ground. So if you're planning on doing any sort of off-road activities, or maybe like you're trying to get to an, a BLM land somewhere, it might be a bit more difficult in the Prius than it would be in another vehicle. So we're going to give this vehicle a B ranking as far as it goes. So right on, let's move on to the next one. Whoever designed this van, I mean, it's just, it's hideous. We're talking about the Nissan NV, especially the high roof version. It's just not good. The gas mileage compared to the other vans that are available in the similar range, this one is absolutely the worst. It's built like a giant brick. It's, um, I haven't seen too many people build out of it. Uh, so yeah, this is an easy D ranking, uh, maybe even an F ranking if we had an F ranking on our scale. So yeah, uh, we can avoid that one and let's move on to the next one. <laughs> okay, this next one is super interesting because it can be built on any sort of truck and we're gonna talk specifically about truck campers. So whether you have a Toyota Tacoma, a Ford F-150, or any other truck, you can buy a truck bed. Now, one really cool thing about this is that if you're someone who wants to go just out on the weekends or maybe an extended long trip, you can simply buy a camper, attach it to the back of your truck, and when your trip is over, you can, boom, remove the camper, set it away somewhere, sell it, do whatever you want, and now you have a regular truck, which you can use for everyday use. Another really great thing is because it can be built on any truck platform, you can buy an older truck, uh, you can buy a newer truck, and the cost can be as high or as low as you want. Uh, one of the things that's negative about the truck camper is that it's not very stealthy. So if you're doing a lot of city dwelling, um, it's not going to be ideal. Also, because the truck camper can be very heavy, it's going to cut into your gas mileage as well as, you know, depending on which truck you have, it's not going to get very good gas mileage either. One cool thing about trucks is they have a lot of clearance, so you can go over landing, you can go into some BLM land and not have to worry about any of that stuff. So we're going to put truck campers in the B category. A lot of good things going for it, not very stealthy, not very good on gas, but pretty cool idea. All right, well, you know we had to include this one and I am obviously biased, but we're talking about the Honda Element. Now the Honda Element has a lot of cool things for going for it, but I have really good experience with this vehicle obviously, so there also are a lot of bad little things, little quirks about this vehicle. Let's talk about the bad first. The gas mileage on this vehicle is terrible. <laughs> I mean, for such a small car, it gets 22 to 24 miles per gallon. When you add on big off-road tires like I did, that's gonna drop significantly down to like 16 to 18 miles per gallon. The engine is really underpowered, so if you're climbing like big hills, big mountain passes, this thing has to be pedal to the metal almost all the way down just to keep a decent speed going up these big hills. It's a Honda, so it's super reliable and in its stock form, it has a lot of like quirks to it, the way the doors open, suicide doors, the way the seats fold up. Also the availability for an e-camper up top is really cool. Uh, the sunroof is in the back of the vehicle and I really like that feature. So if 
you see the when we're laying down you can look up and see the stars uh, so there's a lot of really cool things about his vehicle there's a lot of aftermarket parts and the floor mats in the vehicle are actually rubber so you don't have to worry about getting mud or dirt or snow this vehicle can handle all those things and the sound system is pretty cool too if you get the higher end models another cool thing about the honda element for van life specifically is that it's very stealthy i can park anywhere and i don't have any issues with that so what would i rank the honda element i'm gonna have to give it an a Honda Element is a super sweet vehicle for van life. Obviously, you can't stand inside of it, and that's one of the biggest negatives, and that's why I'm currently in the market to get a Sprinter van. Hopefully soon, fingers crossed for that. Let's move on to the next one. This next vehicle has a cool factor through the roof. This vehicle is super cool, and of course, we're talking about the VW bus. Man, it's awesome. Um, reliability? Eh, but there's a lot of aftermarket support and these engines are super easy to work on. Is it safe? Not really. It's such an old van. The metal is so thin. If you get in an accident, it's not going to be good. But luckily, these vans are pretty slow. You're not going to be going very fast on the highway. So hopefully you, if you get into a crash, it won't be at a very high speed. The configurations inside of them are super cool. Uh, even from the factory back, back in the 60s and the 70s when these were being in production, they had a lot of options for campers and tables and seating and bench seating. So really, really cool vehicle. Now, what do I think about using it for van life? Well, personally, I would like something to be super reliable and um, having in such an old vehicle and trying to get parts for it it could be an issue so if you want something that's super cool awesome but if you want something super reliable eh, it's kind of cutting it close but the cool factor is so cool we're gonna have to give this one i think we're gonna have to give this one a, a tier because it's just such a classic vehicle one of the first like van life cars that are out there and if someone was to gift me one of these i would 100 percent take it in a heartbeat and use it for van life so let's move on to the next one all right this one is an easy s tier the 4x4 brand new 2020 diesel sprinter i mean it needs no introduction it's a 4x4 you can take it anywhere there's configurations 144 wheelbase 170 wheelbase great gas mileage super cool technology the only thing is that it's a Mercedes, so it's going to cost you a pretty penny to buy it outright and to maintain it. I think out of all of the high top cargo vans that are available on the market right now, it's the best looking. It has a huge, 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 huge aftermarket support for it, and you can customize it any way you want. The walls aren't straight and vertical like they are in the Ram Promaster, but they are definitely straighter than they would be in the Ford Transit. So this one is an easy S class. The only real negative is the cost. All right, we're gonna talk about minivans next. Now, a minivan is an awesome idea for van life. Not only is it super stealthy, you get really great gas mileage and you can find these on the market for dirt cheap. They're gonna be super reliable. If you get like a Honda Odyssey or a Toyota Sienna, you're not ever gonna to have to worry about it breaking down. And when it does break down, it's gonna be super cheap to fix. Really the only downside to a, a minivan is that you can't stand up inside of it. And the cool factor is definitely down here. It's, you're not pulling a ton of chicks with your souped up minivan. <laughs> But uh, there are tons of configurations out there and what do I think about using it for van life? I think it's a really awesome choice. If you have a minivan already or maybe your family has a minivan and that's what you have to work with, go for it. So we're gonna give this one, we're gonna give the minivan a B tier. Next up we have the Ford Transit. Now just this year Ford Transit finally released a 4x4 version of the Ford Transit van. So now the Sprinter has a real competitor. I've driven the Ford Transit myself and it drives great, especially with the EcoBoost engine. So not only is it getting you good gas mileage, but it's extremely powerful, more powerful than the Sprinter van for sure. Now it's a Ford, so it's gonna be pretty cheap to maintain and they're gonna be available everywhere and it runs on gasoline. 
so you don't have to worry about finding a diesel mechanic like you would a sprinter van. And there are many lengths available for this one, so you can customize your van to be as big or as small as you want. There's a high roof, which is hideous. There's a medium roof, which is pretty good. And then there's a low roof, depending on your needs. I gotta give the Ford Transit an A class. It's, it's a great vehicle. It's pretty pricey, pretty comparable to the Sprinter, but it just doesn't have the cool factor like the Sprinter does. So let's put it in the A category and let's move on to the next van. And next up, I'm gonna get a ton of hate for, I already know it, but we're talking about the Ford E350. So this is the predecessor to the Ford Transit van and it's been used by contractors, plumbers, and painters as a work van forever. Um, and you might also know it as like the creepy free candy van that you might see on the street. Great things about this van, they're cheap, they're everywhere, they blend in really well in like industrial areas. Uh, bad things, gas mileage isn't great, creep factor is super high, and there isn't an out of the box high roof variation of it. So let's go ahead and drop this one in the D class and let's move on. Well, actually that was all the vans that we had on our list. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Uh, let me know what you think about this list down below in the comments. Uh, let me know what van you're using. Do you love it? Do you hate it? And remember, there's a link down below in the description. So if you wanna participate in this list yourself, you definitely can. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you found this video entertaining or helpful. And remember, if you want to participate in the next video coming up, send me an email with a picture of your van, what you have done to it, and we'll rank it on this channel. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Peace.